kusiana. Palinso malowe na ambira mene ama wala mkaunika ndi makina awa. Fufuzani za zindikilo zonsa za bandarama zatu kuzira pa app yochedwa malai kuacha imene kupesika pa internet Google Play Store kumanso Apple Store. Muka funa kuziwa za ambiri funsa ni kwa director currency management Reserve Bank of Malawi Box 363 Lilongwe Pena phone 01 Utenga au akukupatsira nenda undo na waza umoyo mogwiriza na ndi cham ndi tandizo lochokera ku Pepfar Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the exclusive 60 on Rainbow Television. This is a one hour news package of the latest news from around Malawi. My name is John Apang Koko. Thanks for joining us. Our top stories at this hour. A panel discussion strongly disapproves the existence of old law laws that are still cutting journalists in Malawi. MHRC recommends comprehensive land audit to justify allegations of foreigners on pricing land. Outspoken government critic Bon Kalino suspends all demonstrations. And in business news, Malawi's exports in the fourth quarter dropped to $260.3 million, while also sports later in the bulletin. I'll stand by for the same data. And in our top story, the Malawi Human Rights Commission, MHRC, has recommended comprehensive land audit to justify allegations of foreigners monopolizing big chunks of land at the expense of Malawi citizens. In its advisory statement on Thursday, the Commission further recommends the removal of registration fees for those already owning customary land and the distribution of some idle land in the country. The recommendations are originating from nationwide consultations on land related laws that the Commission conducted last year. The Commission's spokesperson, Kate Kujaiwa, shares the Commission's expectations to our reporter, Robert Edward. These issues of land um, border so much on uh, uh, the very lives of Malawians because it really shows who really Malawians are. It borders on the issues of inheritance borders on the issue of ownership, even uh, issues of citizenship. People believe they belong when they have a piece of land. So it, 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 direct, it directly uh, talks to, to the lives of Malawians and some of these things that we have uh, in the advisory note are coming from uh, Malawians having done consultations and, and, and research. The commission has heard it from Malawians and we're simply presenting to the minister and the ministry as a whole, what Malawians feel. A panel discussion organized by Mr. Manawi on Thursday has strongly disapproved the existence of old laws that are still preventing journalists from effectively serving their audience. The panel has since asked Malawi stakeholders to continue with engagement and advocacy on media freedoms to change the status quo. The discussion centered on the state of media freedom, threats, and opportunities in 2022. Details with Ken Fortidema. The panel discussion organized by Mr. Malawi centered on state of media freedom, threats, and opportunities in 2022. During the discussion, participants agreed that the media is the only sector that ensures that rights of people are being protected and there is rule of law. 
Issues that emanated from the panel discussion on threats to media freedom ranged from politics, media ownership, advertisers, social media, as well as loss of integrity amongst media practitioners. The stakeholders also observed that there was a significant progress on media freedoms and that the level of harassment to journalists subsided. However, Rainbow TV's head of news and programs, Jonah Pankoko, was not amused with the strides made. He argued it was high time the challenges, which include archaic laws, were dealt with. Responding to this, chairperson for Misa Malawi, Teresa Ndanga, said there was need for continued engagement and advocacy with relevant authorities to win the battle. But what we're saying is, I mean, these are public pronouncements. We need something that is actionable, something where the presidency or his government has made a written commitment to. And one of the things that I think we need to have is uh, for the administration to commit in writing through the table, uh, the, the uh, Table Mountain Declaration. Once they sign, at least everyone at all levels of the administration, all levels of government would know better not to utilize the archaic laws. Concurring with Ndanga, the British High Commissioner to Malawi, David Beer, said the talk about media freedom ought to be ongoing as there, as there would always be an issue on the same. I'm encouraged by where we're at in Malawi at the moment. I think uh, um, this is a country uh, uh, that, that is doing well in terms of, uh, of media freedom compared to, to many others that I've worked in. But it's also something that, that uh, you cannot... Uh, stop talking about. Participants to the discussion included Information Minister Gospel Gazako, academician Dr. Francis Chikunkuzeni, and veteran journalist Grigory Gondwe. The discussion was organized by Misa Malawi in collaboration with the British High Commission and Basel Institute on Governance. For Rainbow, I'm Ken Ford, Ndima. Now, outspoken government critic on economic issues, Bond Kalindo, has suspended all the demonstrations he had lined up in various cities to allow government to concentrate on effects of Cyclone Anna. Kalindo told the press in the on Thursday that as concerned citizens, they would now redirect their focus and efforts to visiting and assisting people affected by the floods. Kalindo has also described the country's police cells as pathetic and a real death trap. Robert Edward reports. The outspoken government NOCA maintains his decision to suspend the demos has neither been induced by pocketing any money from government nor being as a result of purported threats on him through persistent arrests. He has celebrated the downward revision of target fees and cabinet reshuffle as some of the indications of government bowing down to their demands. You know, to, to give government time to look into the issues that we raised. Those are the issues that we raised already, and we, we feel some of them you know, have been tackled already, and that's what we think are our achievements. So yes, uh, we are not fighting with anyone, and uh, by saying we want to look into the issues that are affecting Malawians, does not mean a fight. Kalindo has been conducting demonstrations against high cost of living and has previously made a team of cabinet ministers representing government on the target issue. Foreign policies, Robert Edward. Uh, meanwhile, the Chinese embassy in Malawi has given the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, Dotma, 129 million water in response to the tropical storm Anna that affected rather that affected some parts of the country a few weeks ago. Speaking to Rainbow, Dotma's commissioner, Charles Palemba, extended his appeal to well wishers to help the victims with food and shelter. Donge Kasoroda Jr. has compiled this report from London. Since President Lazarus Chakweda declared a state of disaster due to the areas hit by tropical storm Anna, the accounts of the Department of Disaster and Management, Dodma, have been dry because people could not deposit money as requested by the authority. But today, Dodma has disclosed but Dodma has disclosed that it has received 129 million kwacha from the government of China through its embassy. Commissioner for Dodma, Charles Kalemba, says the Chinese donation is the first one to be deposited directly into their account, as many people opted to channel the relief items directly to the victims. We we'll get the first check from the Chinese embassy of about 129 million that will be the first money that is going into the account but uh, we also received uh, a cash donation but uh, which will be completed into 
commodities of 27.5 million from FDH uh, holdings. We also got uh, 60 million from Press Trust that will also uh, go straight into payment for uh, food stuffs. According to Kalimba, the death toll has risen to 48 and 19 people are still missing. He has since appealed to well-wishers to help the affected households with food and shelter. For Rainbow Television in Blantyre, this is Donge Kasolota Chumia. The Malawi Interfaith AIDS Association, MIA, has begun a week of prayer for relief from the effects brought by the cyclone Anna. The areas affected are mostly those in the southern region of the country. Vice Chairperson of the Lilongwe District Interfaith AIDS Committee, which is under MIA, Father Griffin Buna, says apart from the prayers, there were some mobilized funds to assist the affected people. Here is our Romeo Mali. Approximately 130 families in the countries of Madagascar, Malawi and Mozambique have lost their loved ones due to the cyclone Anna. The cyclone has left almost 400,000 families in the areas homeless with no food and no proper shelter. Now a religious body under MIA, the Lilongwe District Interfaith AIDS Council, has organized prayers to ask for moderate rains and other issues. Both Christians and Muslims have joined hands in the prayers which are being held at the Lirongwe Town Hall. Vice Chairman of Lirongwe Diak, Father Griffin Mbuna, says they will also mobilize funds to assist the affected families. We are gathered here to organize these prayers to offer our petition to God so that he intervenes according to the situation. You know, we have experienced disasters the past weeks which have affected people, especially in the, in the lower Shire, plus also in Lirong, some parts of Lirong. People have been affected, some have lost even their lives. So we thought we should come to God, cry to God, so that God comes and builds us out of this pandemic. A few years ago, a similar cyclone named Idai also devastated the same parts of the country. Recently, the Ministry of Health, through Global Fund, donated three ambulances and personal protective equipment, PPEs, to the areas affected by the cyclone. For Rainbow Television, I am Ramiyo Omari. And government plans to find other alternative ways to lessen flood occurrences and their associated effects to the people living in the flood prone areas other than just relocating them. Commissioner for the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, Dogmar Charles Palemba, discussed this when he visited relief items, rather when they distributed relief items to beneficiaries in Karonga and Kadabe recently. However, University of Malawi Environmentalist Assistant Professor Miriam Kalanda Joshua buys the idea saying relocating people has many implications mostly on human behavior. Details with Tony Wana. People living in the lowlands who are usually affected by floods are always reluctant to relocate to upperlands despite many campaigns. Commissioner for the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, Dodge Machaus Kalimba, says now government is planning on maintaining the people in their respective settlements but just try to find ways of lessening floods occurrences with their related effects. He says lessons will be drawn from other lowland countries like the Netherlands. Our position as a department, we have two um, uh, uh, theories that we are working with. One is that uh, we cannot continue to lose land to flooding and, 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 and such type of issues. We need to find a way of reclaiming land actually. I'm saying this because we have countries in this world uh, who are in water, but they still live with the water. And therefore, the first issue that we need to deal with is uh, how can we reclaim uh, the flooding areas. Most of the flooding is being uh, com uh, compounded by uh, environmental degradation. So if we can deal with the issue of environmental degradation, we will reclaim some of the land. But there are also other methods. For example, uh, construction of dikes. So if we construct dikes, we will save certain land. If we train the rivers, we will save certain land because as a country, we still need the land. Kalimba adds that on extreme cases, people will still be required to move. University of Malawi Environmentalist Associate Professor Miriam Kalanda Joshua echoes Kalimba saying locating people is as most people are connected to their history and beliefs of the places they settle in. It is a good uh, suggestion to make, but moving people involves a lot of things. Yeah, you know, um, 
there are so many things attached to a person's place where one is living. Sometimes this can relate to the life roots, okay? How the people are earning their life roots, what do they do? So people might be thinking, if, if I relocate, in this case it means moving people to upland areas, okay? So people might be thinking, if I'm, I'm able to earn a living where I am, just despite this, okay? If I go to upland areas, what am I going to do? How am I going to survive? Malawi has many districts which are normally affected by floods like Garunga, Tuorum, Sanje, Chigwawa, Mulanja, and Katabe. This year's floods, which were induced by Cyclone Anna, which has mostly affected the lower Chile, has claimed about 38 lives. For Rainbow News in Mzuzu, this is Tuani Luanga. Now, the Malawi Electoral Commission MEC may not be able to release new constituency boundaries draft maps this month in as planned. MEC Director of Communications Samuel Mofila told Rainbow Thursday that the review of the scenarios took longer than envisioned as the Commission had a lot of work going through every proposed map. MEC hopes to release the draft maps in March this year. The Americano has won this report. MEC had planned to release the constituency boundaries draft map this month to allow different stakeholders to give their feedback and make changes where necessary. After the draft map, the electoral body had planned to submit the final report to Parliament in October for approval. However, MEC Director of Communications Sangwani Mafrira told Rainbow on Thursday that Commission had scenario maps from all the councils in the country and was currently reviewing them to come up with one that would suit each council. After that, the Commission is going to uh, print these maps and we are going to send them out to all public places where we can manage to get the maps to in all the councils uh, to provide an opportunity for people to view. So in the month of March, the commission is going to conduct what we call public viewing of maps, whereby we're going to invite stakeholders to go and inspect the maps where we're going to hang them. The demarcation exercise saw the constituencies being revised upwards from 193 to 228 a development that some Malawians feared would have a significant economic bearing as it would require an extra cost to manage the 35 added constituencies. According to the constitution, the exercise is supposed to be conducted after every five years, but since 1998, this has not been the case. For Rainbow, this is Leia Marikano. And in legal matters, the High Court in Lilongwe has said 23rd February as a date it will sit for judicial review of a case that the Ombudsman fought at the recruitment of the Malawi Energy Regulatory Authority and Mayor Chief Executive Officer Henry Pachache. Ombudsman Grace Marilla confirmed this on Thursday. The judicial review, review rather follows an injunction that Mera took against Ombudsman's announcement of her determination on the Pachache's recruitment. Tony Luanga is an update. According to Ombudsman Grace Malila, the High Court in Lilongwe has the 23rd of February 2022 as the day it will scrutinize the processes into her determination report into the recruitment of Mera CEO. So we are proceeding with uh, the, the actual judicial review process. Uh, we will be going back to court on a date that the court set, which is the uh, 23rd of February. The review follows an injunction by Mera against the publication of an investigation report which Ombudsman was investigating on the alleged flouting of recruitment procedures of Mera Chief Executive Officer Henry Kashaje. Among others, the report which eventually leaked faulted the Mera board for being unprocedural and directed to treat the recruitment of Kashaje as it never took place and consequently withdraw his purported contract from him because he did not qualify for the job at the time of interviews. The Ombudsman's investigation into the matter was ignited by three separate complaints from Richard Chapuetega, one of the applicants for the post who had also been interviewed, the Forum for National Development and Public Appointments Committee of Parliament. For Rainbow News in Nzuzu, this is Tony Luanga. You're watching Rainbow's exclusive 60 News Package. 
See you after this short break. Imagine if your products and services became brands that come first in the minds of your target audience. Imagine if your communications appealed to people's emotions and become their beliefs that stimulate desirable actions. Shh! Imagine things no more. Skyline International is your solution. We have mastered the art of speaking to the heart of hearts. Our whispers waft into subconscious mind. We are a marketing communications firm that you need for maximum impact in branding, events management, design and print, branding materials, signage, indoor and outdoor advertising, mobile advertising, and the list just goes. Turn your marketing and communications imaginations into a reality. Talk to Skyline International on 0 227 Skyline International. Let's do it. Bari chindu chimozi chomwe ambira malakwisa pankhani omanga nyumba. Nyumba yanu sinafika pokhala nyumba dalilika ngati simunaike denga la zisulo. Chifukwa ngati mwaika matabu apanga talike bwanji azaola. Mari zisani nyumba yanu. Church, warehouse, ndi zina zambiri poika denga la zisulo. If you are NY Engineering and Metal Fabricators, tiri pano wukutandizani wukwanisa maroto anu pantengo otsika. Timapanga maget, window and door flames, roofing, ndizi na zambiri. Ndiko timafika kuna kulikonse kumwe munga tifuni. Tipeze ni kumajinjiri munzida wa blanta ya pankwate. Kabena timbe nfoni pa 0882-339-082. Kabena 0999-256-942. NY Engineering and Metal Fabricators. Try us and you never regret. Welcome back and you're with me, Jonah Pankoko. Moving on, the Ministry of Information says it is working closely with security agencies in the country to deal with digital crimes that are on the rise. Information Minister Gospel Kazako made the statement in Parliament on Thursday as he was responding to a call by Se to rather, rather Ch Choro Central MP Ben Piri who asked the Minister to explain how they are handling issues to do with digital crimes in the country. Kazako said that soon the country's police services, with the help of the Malawi Communications Regulated Authority, MACRA, would establish a forensic audit laboratory to be handled in such cases. Our Rachel July was in Parliament and now explains. Kazako told the House that soon government would start registering all the imported cell phones for easy tracing if they are being used in any form of crime. Kazako also said with the help of MACRA, the police department would now have a forensic audit report to be handling digital crime cases. Uh, very shortly, uh, when people are importing phones, we will be registering all the phones because what is happening is that uh, the people who defraud people, uh, they can have so many uh, SIM cards, for example, but they, they only have one handset. Early on Thursday, Member of Parliament for Cholo Central, Ben Piri, took the Information Minister to task to explain how it was handling digital cases, citing a leaked audio of Martha Jizuma. Piri said it was unfortunate to note that till now, Malawians did not have a clear explanation of the whole scenario, and yet it involved a high-ranking official. It is not a security matter this is at, at this stage because by the end of the day, everybody is a suspect. And now, we don't know who exactly did that. We don't know how it was done. But this is uh, an individual in the name of uh, uh, Martha Jezuma who must be protected. Uh, uh, but the nation is still, uh, 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 is still black as to exactly what happened, where are we? And it's as simple as making a statement. This is where we are, and we're looking at A, B, C. And we're not saying, let them tell us the formula which they're using. So the nation deserves information. Kazako has since assured Malawians that his ministry will do everything possible to get to the root of the matter. 
and Malawi's exports in the fourth quarter dropped to $260.3 million from $338.4 million in the third quarter. Figures compiled from the Reserve Bank of Malawi's quarterly reports show that the country finished the year 2021 with a $2 billion trade deficit. Exports totaled $1 billion. $75 million in 2021 against $3 billion, $74 million of imports. More in this report. Reserve Bank of Malawi says the economy grew by 3.9% in 2021, an increase from the 0.9% in the previous year. However, exports have increased from about $865 million in 2020 to $1 billion, $75 million in 2021. However, exports have also jumped from less than $2.8 billion to over $3 billion, leaving a near $2 billion deficit. The year under review saw increased exports of other commodities other than tobacco, as the country secured new markets like South Sudan, which is now importing maize flour, sugar, beans, among others. With the fast-growing imports, the country is required to increase export volumes and efforts have not been yielding desirable results. The Ministry of Trade and Industry launched a new national export strategy in the year 2021, which intends to grow exports to $1.3 billion from the current $1 billion on average in a year. Kings for Jassi, Rainbow News. Adma feels the country has for a long time neglected long technologies in seed multiplication, which has seen the Malawian market flooded with exported hybrid seeds. General Manager for the State Institution, Ryan Otipiko, has made the observation, saying for this reason the Parastato will be working with agricultural state stations to promote local hybrid seeds. Otipiko says the flooding of exported hybrid seeds is negatively affecting the country as it is a lost business opportunity. He explains more about our chief reporter, Ken Fodidema. Admark wants to go into um, <coughs> seed multiplication. Why do I say that? You know, today's every seed station has been produ producing a lot of hybrid seeds, but nobody has taken and has promoted them. Instead, we are using foreign uh, 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 hybrid seeds in this country. Yes. Locally, we have done all we can, but nobody is promoting that. So what Admark wants to do, is now to do to go full afresh into seed multiplication. For this year round, seed has been very, very expensive. The uptake, seed, uptake of uh, hybrid seed has been very low because our smallholder farmers cannot afford the price of, uh, of the hybrid seeds. So they have been recycling the seeds. They are planting seeds from last year's produce. And that will actually entail into a lesser. Uh, uh, less, less, lesser uh, produce being produced because at the end of the day they have to re re recycle the seed. And back in Parliament, procurement processes are said to be one of the factors that have contributed to the delays in construction of security personnel houses in the country. Minister of Homeland Security Jean Sandeza said this on Thursday during her presentation in the August House. Sandeza also said her ministry was planning to start rehabilitation works in some of the country's prisons, admitting that some prisons were not in good state. Rachel July caught up with Sendez in this interview. The first two of the construction has been really delayed because of you know the procurement uh, process which we, as a government we go through and this has taken more months before concluding, you know providing the uh, contractors that are supposed to uh, construct these um, houses. But as I'm speaking now, all this process has been finalized and uh, any time soon, maybe next month, we'll see the construction commencing. The houses are expected to be constructed in areas including Kanjeta, Sochi and Plantaya. Other houses will be constructed in the long way. There are now hopes that the court might have a national children commission as parliament is expected to deliberate on the act for the same. The development was reviewed by the legislator for the North constituency, Savio Kafafa, on Thursday. He said the commission will drill much on children-related affairs. 
Kafa also said the absence of such a commission was affecting many children in the country as so many laws on how a child is identified were always in conflict with each other. Rachel July spoke to Kafa. Yeah, um, it would be a very uh, good step uh, way forward uh, because uh, what has been happening today is uh, you only have NGOs uh, like you find that there's an NGO uh, which is called uh, uh, Children's Rights, uh, Defenders of Children's Rights, and these other NGOs which are working for the uh, pride of uh, children. But there is no clear government uh, commission, uh, though we have a ministry. So this commission will be under the Ministry of uh, Gender, um, working hand in hand with them. But their focus, what we will gain as a country, is now you have a, a commission which will just be looking into the relevant children issues when it comes to budgeting, when it comes to laws concerning children, and all these other things. And as different institutions continue to comment on President Lazarus Sokola's claim about creating more than 990,000 jobs, Employers Conservative Association of Malawi Executive Director George Kake says they neither confirm nor dispute the claim as they have no information about the claim. However, Kaki is of the view that considering the significant challenges surrounding the economy like the COVID-19, rising inflation and global supply chain, they don't expect much jobs to be created. He further says their 2020 study indicated that almost 682,000 jobs will be lost between March 2020 to March 2022 due to such challenges. We do not have uh, evidence uh, that we could use to either uh, agree with uh, the president or disagree with what he says. But we, at the same time, are aware of the difficulties that the economy is currently going through uh, that could affect uh, 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 job creation. These include the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, challenges in global supply chain, the, and the, the rising inflation uh, on the, uh, on the uh, Malawi economy. Um, and we also believe that the recent uh, uh, ANA uh, cyclone would also have an uh, effect on job creation. But uh, uh, the bottom line is we are unable to either confirm or deny what the president says. Now back to media issues, Mr. Malawi has called for the continuation of State House press briefings, adding the President becomes accessible to the citizen. Mr. Malawi Chairperson Teresa Ndanga has since appealed to authorities to find a way of sustaining the initiative alongside the newly introduced Government First the Press Initiative. She explains more to our reporter, Ken Fonidima. For this administration, we have seen the introduction of uh, the State House press briefings, which has provided access to the presidency, which was not there really in the past. Um, so we we commend this, and I think the first the press uh, press briefings have also kind of um, complemented the efforts uh, from the administration from the highest level. However, we, we note that uh, with the coming in of the Minister of Information press briefings, uh, the State House press briefings have kind of uh, stopped. Uh, we are not sure if the, it's a complete halt uh, or whether they will be introduced or reintroduced. Our plea would be that, you know, that these two are different and therefore we would want to see the State House press briefings being reintroduced. They might, maybe the timing or the frequency may change, uh, but we still need to have them because at least at that level we have the presidency uh, or his um, officials responding to questions that affect them.
Responding to the concern, Information Minister Gospel Kazako says government has only changed the frequency of the State House press briefings and assures they have not been swept off. He explains. Yeah, those programs have not stopped. That arrangement has not stopped. What has changed is the frequency of those programs. Uh, we felt that doing those things weekly or bi-weekly uh, was a little uh, something that probably we could have, we could have reviewed it, uh, differently. Remember that uh, for State House to start uh, such programs, it was a thinking of this government uh, that we have to do this. And you, you, you might wish to appreciate that uh, during the first one year or the first one and a half years of the presidency of uh, our, our President uh, Lazarus Makathe Chakwe, certainly there were so many issues that we needed to to communicate to the people how the presidents uh, will be will be operating, what is happening there. I think most of those things have been done, and then you, what is remaining now is just updates of you know what is happening, the activities in the presidency, and and so on and so forth. So we didn't we did we, we didn't think that we should be doing that uh, weekly. Uh, we we have changed. We now flex a bit and go into tenement. There is a suggestion that beauty pageant and modeling be fused with culture and tradition as one of lifting, rather uplifting Malawi's identity on the international scene. Ms. Kacha Malawi Malumbo Tonga made the suggestion saying there was need for government and stakeholders to invest in beauty pageant and modeling. She says this would play a major role in cultural preservation which could contribute to Malawi's economic development through tourism. Since 2019, Malawi has had no Miss Malawi beauty pageant. We saw more had a chat with Ntonga in our report. Speaking to Rainbow, the current Miss Kaja Malawi suggested government and stakeholders should join hands in investing in the sector, a move that could strengthen the authenticity and richness of our tradition and culture through the art. She said this would ultimately attract tourists just like music, among other arts. People celebrate the Ngoni culture. Now they feel big enough for a long way, but then some cultures don't have that um, opportunity to say, okay, it's a get together of their culture, or so it's a get together of the land or Mbuka. I don't think I've seen that before. Uh, it could be that we like resources, or we just don't want to invest much in this activity, but then we could do more. The government could do more. Um, organizations to do In 2021, Miss Culture Malawi represented the country at the Miss Culture International in South Africa, where she won the category of Best Catwalk. So far, Malawi has only two beauty pageants running and has had no Miss Malawi beauty pageant since 2019. For Rainbow, I'm Chiso Manuenda. That's Chiso Manuenda. I'm now joined by Romeo Mali from the Sports Desk for details in the world of sports. Thank you. Welcome to the sports segment. The Malawi national football team at the Flames has moved to 10 places up on the radiest FIFA mains of football ranking from position 129 to position 119. In reaction to this, Football Association of Malawi, FAM, is over the moon and vows it will ensure there is consistency in the Flames' performance. Competitions and Communications Director at FAM, Gomezani Sakazaka, says that the national team will often be engaging the team to play against stronger teams in friendly games. I spoke to Sakazaka. This is a great news uh, because it shows that uh, somewhere uh, we are doing things right and as far as the performance of the national team is concerned. Uh, we went to the Africa Cup of Nations where we played high profile matches and managed to get uh, results and some top matches. Just to mention our win against Zimbabwe and our 0 0 draw against Senegal, who uh, by that time were the number one team in Africa and are still the number one team in Africa. So basically what it means is that uh, when you get results against those big teams, you are definitely going to push on the FIFA rankings. 
And this is what we should be aiming at in all our matches that we play. That whenever we've got an opportunity to play Giants, we should be able to be getting the results. So this is good news for us. Uh, we just have to make sure that uh, we maintain the pace that we, are, we have raised at, uh, at AFCON and continue doing well uh, when we start the qualifiers for 2023 so that at the end of the day we should achieve our dream, which at the moment is to be in the top 100. After missing on national duties list for close to two years, Malawi's netball star, Mwawi Kumwenda, is set to make her return to the national team. Speaking from her base in Australia, the Melbourne Vixens goal shooter says she is ready to play for the Malawi Queens in the coming assignments. Meanwhile, sports commentator George Kautamasina says the return of Kumwenda will probably change the team's performance at the forthcoming Commonwealth Games. Paul Kalaji with the report. Malawi is a celebrated netball goal shooter. Mwayo Kumwenda is set for her return to Malawi Queens this year after a long absence. Speaking to Rainbow from her base in Australia, the Melbourne Vixens player confirmed the development, saying it always feels good to be playing for your country. I am ready to play for the Queens 100% and to carry the flag. Meanwhile, sports commentator George Gaudzamasina says the return of Kumwenda will probably change the team's performance at the forthcoming Commonwealth Games. Her coming will inspire the rest of the team, but also to fill the gaps where there might be considering that uh, if you look at the what happened at the Penn Series, there were challenges which were there. So the coming in of my it will, it will inspire the rest of the team. So her coming is very very welcome currently the malawi queens are in camp in preparations for the community games slated for july to august this year in birmingham city in england for rainbow in Blantai, this is paul kalaje rugby united are to go back on the market in search of a new coach as christopher nyambosi has returned to chitipa united General Secretary for the team says they have nothing against Nyambose and their target now is to get a new leader for the team. Nyambose could not be reached to shed more light on the reasons of his decision, but General Secretary for Chitipa United, Dumangoma, confirms the coach's return. Blessings and Tika reports. Barely two weeks to the commencement of Super League, Rumpi United has lost its coach to Chitipa United. According to General Secretary for Rumpi United, John Mkandawiri, the then coach Christopher Nyambose left the Leopards of Chikulamaembe side without saying a word and when the agreement was still standing. However, he says they have nothing on him as the agreement was only verbal, so all they want now is to focus on the forthcoming season. Paperwork actually was not done. That's, that, that's why I, 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 I can't claim here that he had uh, a contract with us. Uh, hopefully by the end of this week, uh, I can confirm to you that by, by Friday we'll be able to replace uh, Christopher Nyambose. Nyambose could not be reached on his mobile phone, but General Secretary for Chitipa United, Dumangoma, has confirmed having Nyambose in Chitipa as the head coach. For us, uh, we cannot say the Lumas anymore. We have Christopher Nyambose in our camp now as the head coach for Chitipa United. Christopher Nyambose only stayed with Rumpi United for a year and has been offered a one-year contract at Chitipa United, which is open for extension. For NBA News in Karonga, this is Blessings Mtika. Meanwhile, Rumpi United is all smiles as a school in the district has placed to take care of drinking water in all of its home games. Blessings Mtika is here again. Newly Super League entrant, Rump United is moving with grace as well wishes keep showing interest in helping the team throughout the season. This time, the team has got a pledge from a Rumpy based private school, Philadelphia, which has promised to take care of the helpers of Chekula Maembe's drinking water during home games. Head teacher of the school, Blessings Chavinga, says they are proud of their team and they believe the best morale they need is help from home. As many taking many back and different start to support and sponsor the team. We as a Delphia, since we are within the area, we should just take a very simple and small portion that can add a value to the organization so far. Commenting on the development, General Secretary for the team, Jones Mkadawiri, Approuded the school for the timely help, saying the money set aside for that will now be used for something different. It is a great relief because it will cater for some expenses that we were supposed to incur as a team. 
Rump United is a community-based team whose sponsorship comes from nowhere other than people helping it. For NB News in Karonga, this is Blessings Mtika. More hype and more motivation to under-20 teams in Karonga as Chipanga Creating Agency has pledged to raise the prize money of the tournament. The company's managing director, Alufeo Chipangabanda, hints the talent he saw during the last year's final made him think less is done in nurturing youngsters, hence the increase of the sponsorship. We have more in this report. It's good news for under-20 teams in Chirumba Zone in Karonga District as Chibanga Customs and Crane Agency has increased this year's prize money with extra 600,000 kwaja from the initial 400,000 kwaja, making it a million. Managing Director of Chipanga Customs and Creating Agency, Arufeo Chipanga Banda, says he believes in nurturing football from grassroots level, hence the drive to pump in more support. When I was there on the final day, I saw so many talented young boys uh, display their talent. That's why I decided to increase from 400,000 to uh, 1 million kwasha. Banda also reviewed plans of extending the tournament to other districts like Chitipa and Rumpi, which Northern Region Youth Football Committee Secretary Pickford Kamanga thinks is a good idea considering that there is no such competitions in the Mission District. We look at that development as timely and most welcome and it is quite encouraging for youth football development in the nation. The boost comes at a time when NRYFC is fighting hard to have youth football competitions in districts like Mzimbari, Koma and Shitipa. This is according to Kamanga. For Enbo News in Karonga, this is Blessing Zimtika. And Hockey Association of Malawi, HAM, has started preparations ahead of this year's Region 6 Hockey African Club Championship, which is expected to host. HAM General Secretary Joe Flevia says the association has since launched leagues in the three regions from which players to represent the country will be selected. Salam Mozwa from Lanta reports. The Hockey Governing Body in Africa requested Malawi to host the African Club Championship this year. General Secretary for Hockey Association of Malawi, Joe Bia, said they have written the government through the Sports Council to allow them to host the championship. The AFIH, uh, which is the Hockey Governing Board in Africa, has requested Malawi to host the Africa Cup Championship this year. The last year it was in Ghana. So far what we've done is we've written the government. We're waiting uh, through Sports Council. We're waiting for their response. If they give us a go-ahead, we will now go to the ground and start. Meanwhile, as an association, we have started the league in the southern region, uh, central region, the league starts on Saturday. In the northern region, the league starts on the 22nd February. So once we get the go-ahead from the government, and then we'll also inform the public, and then we'll go also to uh, announce the participating teams. So far, the association have started rig games in all regions where one team will be selected to participate in the championship. For Rainbow in Blantyre, this is Sarah Mlozoa. Well, that's all we had in this segment. You've been with me, Romeo Omari, and it's back to our main host. Many thanks, Romeo, for that sports segment which also concludes today's edition of the exclusive 60 News Package. But in mind of the main stories before we go. A panel of discussion strongly disapproves the existence of old laws that are still gagging journalists in Malawi. Imocharasi recommends comprehensive land audit to justify allegations of foreigners monopolizing land. Outspoken government critic Bon Kalindo suspends all demonstrations. In business news, Malawi's exports in the fourth quarter drop 
to $260.3 million on behalf of the entire newsroom crew. This has been John Abanko. Thank you for watching and bye for now.